First, let me uh, the very warm felicitations of President Muhammad Buhari, who, as you know, is a special guest of honor, and I am here today on his behalf. It's my very special pleasure to join you at this official commissioning of the AFAM 3 Fast Power. AFAM 3 Fast Power, as we've heard already, is an important part of the evolving story of Nigeria's aspirations to bring electricity to millions in their homes and to factories and businesses that provide their livelihoods. This is because it brings into very sharp relief the importance of private capital in building up capacity along the power value chain. A major weakness of our privatization process, which of course you know started in about 2005 and since then, was and has been inadequacy of private investments and new cash injections. But the tide is turning with indigenous uh, and indigenous entrepreneurs such as Transcorp Power and Airs Holding making significant investments such as this 100% acquisition of 966 megawatts in stock capacity AFAM PLC and AFAM 3 Fast Power Limited, jointly referred to as the AFAM Genco, at an acquisition cost, as I'm sure you've heard already, of about 105.3 billion naira. Only yesterday, the National Council on Privatization formally delisted Transcorp Power PLC, formerly known as Ugeli Power PLC, from routine monitoring and evaluation by the BPE, indicating yet another successful power investment. In the last few days, I must say, uh, and I've told uh, Tony Elumeru uh, this already, I must say the last few days belong to Transcorp Power, because at the same meeting, at the same meeting of the National Council on Privatization, the council approved Transcorp, the Transcorp Power Consortium as preferred bidder for the acquisition of the Abuja Disco. But the complete story is that in the past few years, we have seen more new money coming into the power value chain. These transactions include the Quest PLC that became core investor in Yola Disco in 2020 with a transaction worth 19 billion naira. Last month, the NCP approved the 30-year concession on Zugueru Hydro Power Plant at $70 million a year for the entire concession period. And the overall, and overall the story of the Nigerian electricity supply industry is also getting better. I'm happy to say that since 2020, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has ex executed all its biannual review processes without fail. Now, this is a major difference from the past. In 2019, subsidies reached a peak of 584 billion naira in an environment that became so burdensome for the Nigerian government's fiscal position. The introduction of the service-based tariff, a payment discipline initiative for the sector, which was jointly organized by NERC and the CBN, and the introduction of the National Mass Metering Program have led to a doubling of market collections in the Nigerian electricity supply industry from 40 billion naira a month in 2020 to a record 80 billion per month in the first quarter of 2023. In 2021 and 2022, five unperforming discos were brought into a restructuring program that has led to a 10 billion naira per month reduction in shortfalls. If this trajectory continues, then it means that the Nigerian electricity supply industry will attain self-sufficiency by the end of 2023. In other words, it will be able to resource itself, pay for itself. The challenge before us now is for the industry to leverage the improved commercial environment that has been created to sustainably supply electricity and improve service to all our citizens. 
our administration has made significant strides in this direction. The administration has created programs for off-grid electrification. And we, and we also revamped the Rural Electrification Agency such that it now has the capacity to provide renewable off-grid electricity supply on a first-class basis. This administration has also completed concessions, as you heard, the Zungero Hydroelectric Power Plant, that will add another 700 megawatts of renewable energy to our energy mix. We believe we are on track to electrify all Nigerians in the next decade as we look forward to the next administration scaling up already existing programs. Despite all these, we will not make progress if our industrial and urban power supply that is anchored on large-scale gas power plants such as the AFAM 3 power does not improve. Despite having one of the largest gas reserves in the world, the gas supply and security for the power sector has remained inconsistent and is hampering reform. In 2022, a gas supply stabilization fund of 40 billion was established by the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, to provide advanced payment security to all gas suppliers in the electric, uh, electricity supply industry. Consistently, gas suppliers to the sector had claimed that payment certainty was the greatest challenge to supply. Unfortunately, the payment security has not led to improved supply certainty. So I encourage gas producers and gas suppliers to have a fundamental rethink about supply security and prefer ways to ensure our gas supply can improve and meet the gap uh, and growing demands of the Nigerian electricity supply industry. Some areas to further explore would be to depend perhaps more on non-associated gas and specific gas fields to supply the power industry on more, at, at more liberalized rates. Also, more joint regulatory partnerships are needed between NERC and the Oil and Gas Regulatory Agency over gas supply to the power sector. Particularly, every gas company supplying to the power sector should have a requirement to have some form of contractual obligations with penalties for non-performance. We must eliminate all best endeavor contracts for gas supply to the power sector. I also urge the Nigerian National uh, Petroleum Corporation, the NMPC Limited, to work constructively with the power companies in order to improve stability of supply from the Okolomo gas plant and its associated fields so we can have maximum output of the 1.5 gigahertz of energy capacity in this AFAM cluster. Let me end with special commendations. First, to the federal government for starting and completing this project. I recall a number of years ago when General Electric spoke to us about the idea of bringing new state-of-the-art uh, aero derivative gas power units to place at the time uh, the, pres the president's uh, advisor on infrastructure was on the uh, was on the GE side. He's now on the government side, and the whole idea was to replace the scrapped Afam three power plant with these new uh, with this new technology. To some, it seemed fanciful given the negative investment environment for power in the country at the time. But that commitment and partnership with General Electric has now resulted in this additional 240 megawatts of capacity in this very important AFAM cluster that houses our most important power as most important power assets in the country today. Then, of course, the River State Government and the AFAM uh, Paramount Ruler and the communities are joining AFAM for working constructively with the power companies to ensure continued peace and security in the AFAM cluster, without which we wouldn't be here today commissioning uh, this project. Also to General Electric for its continued investments and partnership with Nigeria to improve our electricity industry. With the DGPP and the entire BP team, and of course the National Council on Privatization for another successfully completed transaction. And of course, uh, Tony Olu, the serial power investor 
and the entire transco team for yet another great power sector investment. I'm confident that we have all that we require to create one of the best power markets in the world. I'm also confident that it will happen within our lifetimes. Thank you, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.